In this video, I want to talk about what it means for a random variable to converge in distribution. So we write this just the similar sort of way that we did for probability, except now we write a D above the arrow and we then sort of write it all exactly the same. So this above statement here says that Xn converges in distribution to a random variable X. Well, what does this actually mean? Well, what this actually means is that in the limit that n tends to infinity, we have that the difference between our sort of um, CDF for a random variable xn minus the CDF for a random variable x has got to be equal to zero. So what does this actually mean graphically? Well, it's actually quite a simple explanation graphically. All we have is we have our sort of CDF for our random variable x, which perhaps looks something like that. Whereas the sort of red line here might represent the distribution or the CDF rather of our variable xn. If let's say n is equal to let's say a thousand. But what we will have as n increases is we will have a convergence between these two. So the red line will approach the purple line and then in the limit that n tends to infinity, if they are both actually the same line, then we say that xn converges in distribution to x. So what's the relationship between convergence in distribution and convergence in probability? Well, it turns out that if a random variable converges in probability, then it also converges in distribution. So convergence in probability actually implies convergence in distribution. So the sort of one particular example of this is that if xn converges in probability to a constant, then it is implied that xn converges in distribution to that of a constant as well. Namely, it doesn't have a distribution. However, the logic doesn't work the other way around. In other words, convergence in distribution does not imply convergence in probability. To see this, let's think about a particular example. So the example I'm going to give here is the case of a Bernoulli random variable where we have a sort of probability that of a half that x equals zero and we have a probability of a half that x equals one. So we've got a discrete random variable here. And trivially, I'm going to state that our sort of xn is just equal to x for all n. So trivially, we know that xn converges in distribution to that of x, right? Because it's just the same thing as that variable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define another variable, which I'm going to call y, which is just equal to 1 minus x. And if we could just sort of examine the properties of y, we can see that y takes on a value of 0 with probability equal to a half, and it takes on a value of 1 with probability equal to a half. So trivially, we can see that in this particular case, we have the xn tends in distribution to that of y. So xn tends... However, on examination, it is not the case that xn tends in probability to that of y. So in order to see that this isn't the case, we need to go back to the original definition of convergence in probability, that the limit in n, as n tends to infinity of the probability that xn minus this particular variable y is greater than e has to be equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to construct this sort of term in the parenthesis, which is the modulus of xn minus y. Well, we can see that this is the same as the modulus of x, because xn is just equal to x, minus 1 plus x, which is equal to the modulus of 2x minus 1. And we can see for the case when x equals 0, that we're going to have on the right hand side that the modulus of xn minus y is equal to the modulus of minus 1, which is just 1. And also when x equals 1, we're going to have that the modulus of 2x minus 1 is equal to 1 as well. So no matter how much we try, there's no way that we can make the difference between xn and y arbitrarily small. It's always equal to 1. And because of that, we don't have convergence in probability 
although we do have convergence in distribution of Xn towards Y.